Hi everyone, Dean here. I'm just gonna do a quick vlog entry. Um, today's uh, March 16th or 17th, I believe. It's uh, around 5 a.m. I've been here all night and uh, getting ready to do the setup to run parts now. But over the past week, um, I went through the machine all the axes. I started with the cutoff and I, um, I opened it all up, cleaned it out, and uh, flattened the jib, the gib in there. And then I went on to these two. This one needed a lot of work. These two uh, needed much less work. Uh, but all three of these are flat now. And then I went on to this gib. Um, it's the first time I ever took apart this turret before. So there were a couple of issues um, what happened. Um, unlike these, uh, this one, I was unable to slide the turret off completely in order to work on the dovetails. Um, because... Uh, there were a lot of things back here that need to be taken apart. It was just too troublesome. Um, so what I decided to do was basically just slide the, the gib out and uh, clean out the dovetails with a uh, ram rod and then just work a little bit on the, on the gib, clean it up a little bit, which I, I did clean it up considerably. Um, and then I went to go put it back in there and I... Uh, clipped it on this raised edge um, under the spring. And I think what happened was I bent it a little bit. Another thing that was happening was uh, the spring return force was too low. I couldn't figure out why. Um, spring, spring return force was too low. I couldn't figure out why. It turned out being um, an adjustment screw in here. I was making too much pressure on this uh, rack gear. Um, but I tried doing all kinds of things like adding a plug in the bottom of the spring. Um, I had to take the spring, open up the spring, which was dangerous and um, enlightening. But uh, overall, I learned a lot about this turret. It's a fascinating mechanism. Um, and uh, most importantly, this machine now uh, is just real tight. Uh, and it's, I did a good job on it too. It should run for quite a long time. Hold some very tight tolerances. So I'm very excited to move forward now with the, with the job now that it's all set up like this. Especially because I'm putting my, my mini tapper on it. That's another thing I did last week. I was install the controls and the sensor down here. And uh, I got this roughed out on the tool holder. So that'll go right here. Okay, so last week I posted a half-ass video uh, showing my tapper halfway through uh, completion. And I finished it up today for the most part. So I want to show it off. Obviously, it's very nice looking. It's got this nice belt cover now. Before, the whole belt was exposed and uh, definitely wasn't permanent. This aluminum cover, I'll take it off right now. This aluminum cover will keep all of the uh, chips and debris out of the timing belt. The timing belt is a uh, MXL series 10.1 inch outer circle belt. I've got a uh, 10, tooth, 10 tooth pulley on the input and a 12 tooth pulley on the output. And then 
the 12 the 12 tooth pulley is coupled to a 16 tooth gear and the 16 tooth gear is uh, driving a 24 tooth gear it means my overall gear ratio is just under 2 to 1 um, I'm controlling it with a stepper stack there's the uh, primary drive pulley it's driving this uh, nice little belt, it's got Kevlar reinforcement in there here's my beautiful solid uh, gearbox and there, that's where the tap will be the, uh, the bore of this part it's got a split bore the bore of this part is 140 and a half thousandths so tap like this will fit right inside of there and then you can drive a quarter 28 nut on the front of that and lock it in place and as you can see there it's a rigid tapper what the way this works is uh, the thread on this quarter inch diameter shaft you can't really see it there but it, there's a uh, quarter inch 80 thread on there it's a, uh, a non-typical thread the the base shav shank the base shank base I just call it the base is uh, is tapped with a quarter 80 thread Anyway, um, I'm going to take this thing apart and show you the inside. Okay, so I took the gearbox off. Here you can see the belt driving this 12, uh, 12, 12 tooth pulley. There might be some alignment issues right now. I need to work on that. For the most part, it's running really smooth. So here's this uh, 12 tooth pulley being driven by the belt, the belt driving this 16 tooth pulley, the 16, I'm sorry, gear, 16 tooth gear is driving the 24 tooth gear, which is, I believe, a 2 to 3 ratio, and as it spins, the bigger gear slides along the length of the smaller gear. I'm not sure how long this will last. The fact that the gears are made of brass does not help either. This could be made out of hardened steel for a longer lasting system. But this will certainly be an interesting test. Because it's a real world test to see how long the gears last, how long these threads last. Um, and hopefully we'll get some value out of, out of the test. So this is a profitable research experiment. Uh, the back end of each shaft is supported by a bearing. The shaft on the left goes through this bearing. Um, and it's a slip fit. So this will actually slide through this in a ring. And I don't want to break the belt. You get the idea. Point is, it's extremely rigid, and the forces are limited to, I believe, two vectors in this case. And uh, it's controlled by stepper stack. Ste this is why I made stepper stack, because stepper stack, after a long two weeks' work and uh, sore fingers, last thing you want to do is start designing a driver circuit. Stepper stack is a general purpose driver. It allows you to get started uh, quickly and uh, it, it allows you to get started quickly with all the extra features that are in there and then just by throwing it in passive mode later on you can integrate it with a larger more complex uh, driver circuit. But they're pretty good as is and they've got a, an extremely attractive heatsink. Alright, before it gets all dirty, 
I want to take a video, another video of this. This is a 17 frame stepper motor from Lin Engineering with a 1.8 degree per step resolution. I got this nice uh, continuous flex cable on it with a, a nice uh, stainless steel clamp restraint for the wire because this thing will be moving in two or three inches over and over again. 